Good evening and welcome to Latino Talk TV. I'm your host, Jose Luis Jimenez. I'm Ben Mendez. Joaquin Martinez. And I'm Javier Perez. So guess what? We're here live at Houston Media Source in the greater east end of Houston, Texas. And we're very excited to have you join us tonight because we're actually, uh, we're going to recap the elections that just happened here in Houston. We had some runoff elections and it's been very exciting to see what has happened here. Uh, and if you're not really involved with politics, this is a good place to find out what's going to you know, really happening. We got uh, Joaquin, who is very involved in, in the east side of Houston. Uh, and we also have some recaps on some other elections that were really, really shockers at the end of the day. So, you know, at the uh, before we get into those topics, we just find out what's going on out there in the community and in Houston. Ben, what's going on out there? Well, unfortunately, we had another police officer that was indicted, uh, Harris County Sheriff Deputy. Mm hmm was indicted for raping somebody that he was going to arrest. In exchange wow. for having sex, they, he, that person did not get arrested. So this is what this person is claiming. Now, you know, in San Antonio, we just had something, I right. believe it was two weeks ago, the very same thing happened. And then many months ago, here in Houston, HPD had the same incidents. Uh, so I, I don't know what to say about that, but... Uh, obviously, it's a concern mm -hmm. uh, that's happening in multiple departments. So what do you think about it? Well, I think that, that people should report situations like that, but we also have to look at the, the fact that the person is only indicted. You know, he's not guilty yet, you know, because, uh, you know, our boys in blue, they, they count a lot of risk every day. And, and, and the big problem is that we have single-man units. I'm not a big supporter of single-man units. Think about it. They're at risk every single day. The cameras are out in the cars. And, you know, they don't have cameras surrounding the vehicle all, all the time, and they don't have cameras inside the unit. So this is just another way how we can, we can keep protecting our police officers. I really do think that we need to increase the way we police the police officers, but in, to protect them from situations where they may not be, you know, at fault. Maybe, maybe it's just a false accusation. But who knows? We'll find out what the court says. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, as a citizen, you know, you always get, you know, you have to see both sides, but at the same time, you know, there's always been this, and, and especially in the East End, um, you know, individuals kind of are fearful of the police. Mm -hmm. uh, so there definitely needs to be more communication. You can't de necessarily just, you know, throw your weight in and say, okay, they're guilty, like you're saying, Jose, which I agree. Um, but at the same time, we all, we all do need to hold ourselves accountable. Um, so... You know, I have friends, fraternal brothers that are that are police officers, and you know, and like you said, they do risk their lives every day. Um, we do ne ne definitely need to, you know, stand up for them. Um, but how can we kind of mend or bridge some of that? You know, I think there are some things, you know, citizens, uh, you know, uh, advisory council that, that that could help out with some of that. Um, also, you know, where the police officers in the communities can start, you know, uh, even more so. I know, I know, there's also engagement in, in the community, but how can we bridge that even more? You know. Can't accuse them off the off the bat, but you know we definitely need to be mindful of what 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 our community does look like. So, you know, to have to have that type of abuse of power, you know, this this day and age, you, you know, you, I mean, uh, you can't get away with anything, and uh, you know that that's really just you know I hate to, I, of course I, I'm not trying to say the man's guilty, but for him to be put himself in that situation, is just a, a, a just a complete complete just lack of, of good judgment. You know, so, I mean, but that's the day and times we are, I mean. Well, my concern is uh, for those immigrants that are afraid of the police to begin with, mm -hmm. that are not going to come forward. So you have a situation where you have what I call illegals, if you will, for lack of a better term. Uh, well, there is a better undocumented. term. Undocumented. Undocumented. Okay. Uh, so they're afraid of the police, and they're not going to report. If they are raped, They're unfortunately, they're not going to report it. Mm. Well, you know, there, there's always two sides to, to every story, and you're right. Uh, there's a lot of people who will not engage the police because they still b see the police here in, in this side of the, of the border as if they were the same as the federales on the other side. And over there, you don't cross the, the federal police because they'll come after you anyways, right? But here, <clears throat> to a point, I think there, there's a little bit stronger protection around them, but at the end of the day, what's a piece of paper going to do when the other person still has access to a gun? and they want to come after you, you know. You can file all the restraining orders that you want, but it really does take a lot of strength and courage to, to actually stand up and file that internal affairs complaint against that police officer. It's not an easy task. Well, speaking of guns, we had another incident in one of the schools in Colorado. Uh, we had a young lady that was shot. Unfortunately, she's in a coma right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there goes uh, another case of somebody taking a gun 
a student taking a gun to a school, whether it be high school or college, and causing some serious problems on, on campus. In this case, uh, we're lucky that there wasn't a whole bunch of people that were shot. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he, he came prepared. The person that did the shooting came prepared. Uh, he had many rounds with him, uh, and he was ready to take some people down. So how do we fix that type of situation? You, you know, as a former teacher at Austin High School, I, I think it's kind of tough. You know, the, the, I'm against having a metal detector for everybody to come into the door, mm -hmm. uh, first of all. It, it's just a tough call. Um, the only way I can see improving is to have better security, have more security. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, there's a lack of resources in our public schools right now, so I don't see that anytime soon. As a matter of fact, we don't even have police officers at the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. And we have a few at the junior highs, and then we have a few at the high schools. That's about it. You say we need better security. I say we need better parenting. You know, I well, think it's that at the, at the end of the day, the person that's responsible for, for the child acting that way is the parents. You know, we can't, we got to quit, you know, trying to find a solution everywhere else but the home. You know, and, and yes, it's tough. There's a lot of kids out there that don't have both parents or, or any parents, but they're getting cared for by somebody, you know, and we need to help. We need to find resources and support to help the parents to do a better job, you know, because a lot of times the parents just don't know what they don't know. And they might need that extra training and support from the campuses to help the parents provide better services or better support for the kids. You know, speaking of resources, you know, a, a lot of individuals, in this past, these past handful of years that have been going to schools and shooting have had some type of mental disorder. And I think that's another thing, it's another root issue, you know, to be mm -hmm. able to provide some of these services, having making sure that they have access to it, you know. And, and so it's important to make sure that, you know, the, gov the government or, you know, our, 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 our government, which, you know, we pay into, also provide some of that service, you know, to to our community to make sure that you know individuals that are mentally disordered that they ha they have access to these things and parents have access to these things. Yeah. Um, but I agree, you know, definitely parents. Parent, it is about parenting, um, and it's about you know having access to those resources too. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, I think I think the facts of of, of so far of the shooting was that because he, he was kicking off the debate team or something like this. I mean, man. Uh, 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 teacher didn't sound like he did anything wrong. He was just disciplining the student. He he broke the rules, so he kicked him off the team. And you know, this kid comes back and you know wants to end his life and just shoots a random student. I mean, I mean, what can you do about something like that? You know, and and again, I I think I think you know Jose's right. A lot of it comes down to, to parenting. I mean, now I mean, I mean, there's kids. I think have have it. They don't know how to handle rejection. You know, they don't make the ball team. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't, you know, I didn't make the little league baseball team. There was only so many spots. You know, now everybody makes, everybody gets a medal, you know, and and, uh, and a lot of these kids just don't know how to handle rejection. You know, they don't know how to how to, how to to build on that, how to make that into a positive. They just right away, okay, well, I'm not off the team. I want to kill the coach. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Well, another news story to change the subject here, Utah. The courts have upheld the decision that was made a while back. Uh, a while back, they said you could not have a polygamous home. Now you can, according to the new court ruling. So polygamy is allowed in Utah. I'm moving to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife is going to let you move to Utah. Uh oh, she is like right in the back. If you could put a She's camera. She's pointing at me. <laughs> turn the camera. You can see her face right now. Look. She's doing this. She's doing this. Okay. You can turn it. See. You can see her. See her there. Camera people, switch to the camera. There you go. She's going to hang in back there. Hey. <laughs> Well, um, you know, like they say in Texas, don't don't think they have a pre haste night off when the bull goes in another pasture. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna stay out of this. Yeah, I'll, 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 let, let's I'll change the subject. Right now, my friend David Guerrero is going. Stop, <laughs> dude, you're killing yourself. Hey, we can't laugh just, at ourselves. Just give him a little rope, right? Yeah, give know, him a little rope. Oh, yeah, tighten it up right now. And you're be sleeping on the couch. Yeah, I will be. Well, <laughs> on, this <couch. laughs> on this couch right here. Well, let's talk about uh, Mandela, President. Wait, oh, let's man. go back. With, let's okay. Go president. I want, we can go back. We were talking about uh, kids that don't know how to handle rejection, right? But yeah. didn't you hear about the case about the 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 kid that got off because he got diagnosed with affluenza? The the, the he killed four people. Oh, uh, uh, drunk driving. Drunk driving. Yeah. Sixteen year old. That's right. Wealthy young boy. And the, the doctor diagnosed him with affluenza, 
And and I remember growing up, my dad used to, you know, dad's got a master's in social work. Is that work. affluent, like affluent? Affluent, oh affluenza. So my dad used to tell me, he's like, you need to learn how to work because I don't want you to suffer from premature affluence. And as a teenager, I, the hell I knew what premature affluence meant, but now I'm, here I am later on, a little bit older than a teenager, and they're actually diagnosing affluenza, and the kid got off with, with, with 10 years of probation. Because he had money. Because he had money. That's right. The judge yeah. gave that boy 10 years probation, but she sent another 14-year-old African-American young boy to, to 10 years in the juvenile uh, system, I think, for punching a boy who fell down and, and died uh, from a punch. Wow. I mean, so... You know, to, and our friend Jeffrey Boney, if he's watching the show, he said, well, who suffers from Brokenza? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, it's ridiculous. I tell you, just it, that's, that's, you know, one of the things that we can say is wrong with our judicial system. It's all a matter of money. Who can afford to pay the high lawyers? And, you know, if you come from the right background, you have a better chance of getting off. And our judges in Texas right. are elected. They are elected. Actually, there's going to be a lot of elections coming up soon. So I imagine that judge that was uh, the ruling on that case Who knows? is going to be taken out of office. Can't make any direct insinuation. Well, maybe not. Or maybe they're going to have some yeah, great okay. campaign <laughs> donations. Yeah, I mean, you if, know? if you're affluent, you say, I want that judge in office. <laughs> right, he's going to let me or some of my family go. Right. You know, he's going to let us off. I wonder so. if it's only affluenza or, or, or affluenza, non-minority affluenza. Which one is it, you know? You know, um, we... When when it comes to you know minority and color you know uh, it, it it definitely brings up issues that people don't like to talk about. It's still necessary. You know, there's there's still a lot of a lot of things that are you know in the in the country, but even at a local level that you know people people still need to be be watchful of. Uh, we need, we need to definitely try and uh, you know cover those those color you know those color um, you know lines and stuff of that sort. But um, it's it's still there. Um, I think you know sometimes as a minority it's easy to say that it's it's always going to be there but you know working you know at a nonprofit for so long and serving different communities you know you always you know become that person that you know is almost I guess and I've been told like you're in a fantasy world sometimes because you you know you, you want to help everybody and everybody wants to help each other and that's not always the case but mm -mm. Um, you know you, you, you don't want to fall to those realities at times um, but it's still there, it's, you know, community, schools, and, and we need to definitely work a lot harder to open up. And I think, you know, ser series like this, you know, that allow conversation to happen, you know, other communities have as access to being able to watch what's going on. Y'all bring on different, different kind of individuals as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it bridges that. And I think what y'all are doing is definitely something that's, you know, in the path to, you know, hopefully not being just for the affluent that can get off, but you know, we can start getting down to the core of who everybody is, you know. Well, it's not y'all, it's we. You're here too, so. There you go. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. It starts there, we gotta do it together. Definitely. So, so going back to Obama, to not Obama, to. Oh well, yeah, well, let's talk about Obama at the Nelson, at the Mandela <laughs> yeah. uh, ceremony. Oh, you're talking about the sign language uh, Hold on, keep going, keep going, hold on, keep doing the show. <laughs> I wanna take a selfie, hold on, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> That's social media and right? that's technology nowadays, right? Um, we can talk about that and then talk about his wife being upset, I guess. If I'm your wife. I mean, you don't even know she was, I mean, like, hey, that still moment. You don't even hey, know she's like. Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's just uh, something to talk about. The paparazzi and those guys, uh, they don't have anything better to do but follow <laughs> the president and his entourage around and trying to figure out something bad to publicize yeah. the president about. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's unfortunate that uh, our pr former president from Africa passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, Mandela was a great leader worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had a week-long celebration. And uh, it was good to see a lot of the leaders from all over the world come in and, and participate in his funeral. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different perspectives. Um, I saw on Facebook that Ted Cruz was, you know, acknowledging his leadership. And then a lot of Ted Cruz followers were just bashing Cruz on him, you know, and miseducation saying that uh, Mandela, Mandela was a terrorist and he walked around with different people that were actually killing young people. And, and you know, it kind of goes back to, you know, what, what could that conversation look like? You know, you have somebody that's fighting for somebody's rights and fighting it to the death. Um, it's a hero. And then people see that depending on what side of the fence you are. If you're attacking 
my home, then now you're a terrorist. If you're on the other side, then now you're a freedom fighter. And I think that's an inter interesting conversation really to have because um, we have that on a local level again. We have that here in the United Look, States. It comes down to say, who, you know, which side of justice are you on? And I think it's, you know, it can, it, it, it's obvious that, that Mandela was on the side of justice. You know, he, he fought, I guess you could technically call him a terrorist, but he was fighting against apartheid, you know, and, and, and you know, was ready to give up his life. You know, he, I think he's an inspiration to, to you know, he's been an, he's an inspiration to our leaders. He's an inspiration to children now. I mean, it, it, he, was, he was a great man, and he mm -hmm. certainly deserved all the accolades that, that he was given uh, at his death. But I'll tell you one thing, you know, I, I, I should learn sign language. I could have I no, got a great deal. Right you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. I don't you think know, he was in the great Speaking of the guy who was doing sign language, you know, after we take a break, our, our, our in-house psychologist is going to talk about the guy who he took, he said he didn't take his medicine. That's why he was having hallucinations while he was doing the sign language. Yeah. So. I hope I hope Dr. Feelgood took his medicine. Right? So. Yeah. Well, we got one more current event that we need to talk about. Well, let's hear it for our Texans, guys. Yes, 12 in a row, right? I tell you. For 13. First draft pick, is that what you said? On the road to excellence. 12 in a row, Texans. <laughs> On the road to excellence. Oh, you know, well, I'll tell you what. My third war Cougar, he you know, lost, what, eight in a row? Yeah. Oh, it's, man. it's the offensive yeah. line, man. Yeah. You know, I'm a U of H grad. I'm a Case <laughs> Keenum fan, Absolutely. but golly, I feel bad for the guy. Yeah. Yeah, he has not been able to do it. And uh, I don't know about how you all feel about Case, but uh, I don't think he's our guy for next year. Yeah, I don't. I, I think everybody's kind of seeing that. I think yeah. the front. I think the offensive line needs to be replaced because I mean he's got the heart, he's got the passion, he's got the aim, you know. But he can't stay on his feet long enough, yeah. you know. And then there's no receivers. I mean, you, you, one person can't win the entire game. Definitely. You look, yeah. Andre Johnson's awesome, but yeah, but you have to have a leader on the team, and unfortunately, we don't have a leader on the offense. Case is not seen as the leader. Well, and, it's, and, it's kind of set up to fail almost. You know, you, again, that yeah. offensive line is horrible. You know, I, don't, like, I don't think anybody would be. The Titanic was already had a hole in it, and they put, put you <laughs> in it as a captain. What are you going to do? Jump ship. <laughs> You're right. You're going down with the ship, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. got to give him some heart. He's sticking through it. He's giving everything he's got, play after play. But come on, we got I know you're, four you're, times. I know you're, you're a UH grad. Absolutely. So, so, are, so am I. So it's not anything against Case Keenum, per se. Yeah. Uh, as an individual, okay, but I just don't think he has it as the leader of the team. I would like to see a first-round draft choice, a quarterback. Well, I think you're going to get team. that. I think you're going to get that. I think that kid from – I think you're looking at the kid from Flo – no, not Florida. Was it Carolina? The one who won the Heisman mm -hmm. Trophy? Yeah. yeah. Florida. In Florida. Florida, okay. Yeah. But you need a, well, no, they, they're, they're saying there's – considering somebody else the the uh, there's another uh, a quarterback that's an offensive yeah. lineman right? not, it, we, we have to lose two more games to get the first round traffic right yeah. i mean as long well, as we, we don't could, screw we could win up. one of them we could win one of them because i think the next well, we're officially up. the worst team yeah. in the nfl hopefully we don't love my Texans. lose the first round draft pick i know we yeah. lost it that last time when we yeah, beat we, indianapolis we, we, we actually won a game yeah we could, we could tie we could tie the jaguars and they they have some two more wins than us. Win, you know, so if we if we can tie them, we they they beat us twice, so we would get the pick. Oh, or maybe <laughs> we're not seeing the big picture. Maybe McNair doesn't want to win. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he told him, hey, you know, play Keenum, play Keenum, run, run that run that horse that's dead. You know. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all it's all just uh you know they're just all going through the motions right now. He's got uh, the heart. He's got the passion. Oh yeah. Man, maybe we can hire Mac Brown. Mac Brown? Yeah, right. <laughs> he's he's, he's, he's uh, open for employment right now, isn't yeah, he? Oh, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I look at the bright side. Next year, I'll be able to buy some season tickets because I think the waiting list has shrunk down by a few thousand because everybody, all the Fairweather fans are jumping. You know, that's, that's, that's the thing about it. You have to go through this rebuilding process all over again. I thought, oh, my. It's going to be terrible next couple of years here in this damn football. Yeah. Uh, it's, a it's gonna be terrible because you know any any rookie quarterback you get in there, it's gonna take him a couple years to to get the you know to get the get the helm. Oh, sorry, live TV. Sorry. <laughs> There's a friend of mine was trying to get rid of his Texas ticket, and they're like, "Man, you didn't have to give me money." To <laughs> you should call me. Hey, if you don't want your season tickets, call me on the phone. It'll be on the screen. I'll take them. Okay? Free. <laughs> what else we got out there? That's it. That's it. Oh, actually, we got one more. One more bad news. Uh, we were talking about shootings in the neighborhood in Channel View yesterday on Sunday. There was uh, some teenagers got shot from Channel View High School. You know, once again, guns in the streets and the community saying we can't do anything about the violence. I totally disagree with that. 
you know, the more you, the more the parents get involved in the in the kids' lives, you know, the better the community we're going to have. You know, and and now on the other part is you know the elections. You know, and I think these elections were a big eye opener for everybody. And and we're going to take a quick break and we're going to get right into talking about each one and the results. Y'all good with that? Yep. Good deal. All right, you're watching Latino Talk TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Latino Talk TV here at Houston Media Source. Now we got our, our more, we got our guests joined us right now. Sorry, live television. All right, so let me introduce to you our guests by their nicknames. Y'all ready? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let them introduce themselves and we'll go for, start from here. I'm a guest? I'm yeah, a guest host, man. Oh, you're the host guest. <laughs> you got the motor. Oh, yeah, y'all know me. I've been here before. El Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Diaz, thank Tony you. Tony so Diaz, a little traficante. Happy to be here. Glad you can join Good us. Good alibi to have. <laughs> Rob Arteaga, psychotherapist. Dr. Field. Dr. Field. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do right now is we're going to get into the elections and, and kind of talk talk about the impact and different you know different perspectives of what's been happening in our community. So let's just start off from the very top. You know, District A, Houston, Texas. Uh, there was a race between Brenda Stardick, Stardick yeah. and uh, Elena Brown, who is a uh, who's a Latina, mm -hmm. right? And also Brenda Stardick, who was uh, was had the position, got knocked out during the tea the Tea Party Revolution, as I called it, and everybody gained their senses again. Your fe you know, your fellow Tea Partiers. My fellow Tea Partiers. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna use that, that little clip against me one day. <laughs> Anyways, so let's let's get right into it. What do y'all think about that? Wait a minute race? now, just because her last name's Brown doesn't mean she's Hispanic. Elena. So, her name's Elena. Now, is she Latina, Chicana, or Tejana, or Texican? I've only, I've only introduced myself once to her. In well, her, her real name is Elena Cafe. <laughs> 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 but no, that, that's my district. Now, that's in Spring Branch. Now, I will, my district also. Yeah? My district. I will tell you that there was a lot of people that were against her this time around because of what she was doing at City Hall. She oh. voted against anything that spent any money at City Hall. So police, fire, whatever the case may be, whoever needed money, they could not count on Elena Brown's vote. So you would have a 16 to 1 vote all the time. Except for her paycheck, maybe. That's the only thing she wasn't. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and let me tell you how, how she was as far as her staff. She fired she, her own staff. She did not allow her staff to work full time because she didn't want the city to lose any money. So her staff was required to work, I believe, 32 hours a week. Hmm. What? Well, that's, oh, sorry, that's pretty sad, if you ask me. Well, on top of it, I, th I think the thing about A, it's funny. Um, I'm sorry, but she's not running on a Latina agenda. She's not, I mean, it, it's kind of like talking about Ted Cruz as a Latino. So, so I mean, <laughs> well, how about this? If Ted Cruz is Latino, <laughs> I'm, I'm not Latino anymore. Tom Cruz is Latino, Ted too. Ted Cruz, Tom Walker. <laughs> so, 
So, and then Chicanos and Mexicanos and Tejanos need to secede from Latino. Right. So if he's Latino, we're going to secede, <laughs> and then we'll create treaties with everybody else one by one. Uh, but but the, the Latino separation begins exactly, here. Exactly. So Ted on that side, <laughs> Elena on that side, and us on this side. But, but the other thing I think that's a, a little more um, unnerving is how many Latinos, Chicanos, Tejanos, there are in A, that are not being represented because I, I live in A too, and it's a hard terrain to organize. Um, yeah, I mean, I I worked and lived in uh, District A, and I suspect that it's a lot of fear in the community mm -hmm. because a lot of the the Hispanic folks that are in District A are unfortunately undocumented. But um, I, I I went to the polls, and last time when I early voted, there was a lot of uh, support for Brenda Stardig. And this time when I went to the runoff, there was also folks that were just uh, talking about Brenda Stardig. And that was, I, I, it made me go in and just look more into the issue. And it's, I swung my vote. Is this conspiracy theory conspiracy. stage? <laughs> oh, okay, let me give a conspiracy. You were going to vote for it, yeah? <laughs> Well, I voted without knowing who was uh, any of the candidates. Wow. You were on live TV. Oh, oh. Shit. Yeah. 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 It's starting on you here. Yeah. Yeah. We're rolling, you know oh, that. Right? This is live television. Oh, hell no. Say that out loud. Endorsement or recommendation. But if you miss the vote, you lie and say you're voting. No, no. You don't say it on live television. On national TV. Yeah. National TV. Yeah. I don't know who to vote for. Wait, <laughs> I did. I mean, this is going to be on CNN. <laughs> from, the, uh, from the any, mini, miny, mo party. Uh, but he, he makes us feel good. That's a good thing. <laughs> At least he voted. I mean, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the other thing, though, that, that makes me wonder, too, um, the reason they probably don't also outreach, um, you know, there's a lot of folks who live in apartments, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's the turnout. We're talking about what three percent just decided most of these seats, um, and maybe two hundred votes. Yep. So if you let too many people know, there's enough raza. There's two hundred and one Latinos that would have showed up. You say you're throwing a, a, the Fito Olivares is playing, and there, you know we'll have ten thousand people show up. Free you know, beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they'll be there. So yeah. that would have, if enough had heard about it, sure. it could have actually turned on. Part of me thinks that people still don't want. To, to change that or, or, or rock that. In Last that night, I went to El Bolillo Bakery around... Yeah, I have been there. 7 o'clock at night. No, 8 o'clock at night. That is a and good bakery. And there, there was a line waiting outside to get into the bakery. So I'm walking in, and there are people literally elbowing for pan dulce. You know, and I'm like, man, I wish people would do this for... The, for the, act like this on election day. Yeah. You know, it's like, man. That white boy can bake. You know? <laughs> that white boy can bake some pan dulce, man. <laughs> You know, but think about it. It's like we'll, we'll go for anything else but elections because we haven't found the value in it yet. But I'm not gonna. Uh, okay. But I'm not gonna blame us only though, because I mean, it's neither more, Brenda or Elena came more. to my house, so I live there and I have a fake address too. And a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't come to any of my. But your name is Diaz. <laughs> oh no, what that? It's okay. We just cross them out. What about my Latina sister, Elena? <laughs> but again, I mean, me that I am interested in voting, and I and I want to look for the information. It's not it's readily not there. available. You didn't get any mail outs at your house. That's the bad thing. That my the biggest literacy for me about the candidates is those mail outs. I mean, I don't think that it should be that way. And the thoughts, the the talking points that I had about the candidates came from those mail outs. I don't think that that's you know sufficient for us to make those decisions. And because I heard one person at each time that I went to the poll say the name Brenda Stardig, that's what stood out in my mind. I think that I'm somebody that's interested in it. Most people aren't. I think if we're gonna get those folks interested, there's gotta be something else, you know? Well, the tools are, the tools are there. They're there. You know, you definitely have to sometimes work hard to get to, the, to that information, but the tools are there. You know, you have the League of Women Voters that they have their printout all the time. and it's non-biased. It's not like they're pushing any candidate or the other. You know, you can also do Harris vote. You can you can really go out there and look for it. But uh, you know, I think what it what needs to happen too is that the the candidates themselves and even the ones that are currently in political office need to do a bigger, better, uh, a better job of actually doing some education instead of just saying I just want your vote. Now, what else can you bring to the table? You know, educating people about three, four, five percent that turn out to vote. You know what? What is that? That real number? 
200 people and then actually having that conversation you know one precinct alone is about 2,000 voters you know and mm -hmm. to have that pre you know one precinct could have actually flipped that whole you know that whole yep. that whole election and that could happen in any election actually mm -hmm. that, that happened in the runoff um, but it's it's it really is that you know those political uh, you know office holders it, they can't be seen just as politicals that they go and they you know represent but they also have to work and be engaged in the community and that's where honestly you know you say you get mailers but those mailers are definitely you know if I'm gonna send you a mailer I'm gonna send you everything good about myself mm -hmm. you know and then everything bad about the other candidate um, but I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna be open and honest about you know what if you you know if so many more people come vote then you know this is this you know we can increase by five ten percent because that's a whole new voter base that you have to work for and you have to go and you know, actually work to get, you know, get to gain their trust, you know, and, 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 and that perspective as a political office holder, oh, I don't want to do all that. Mm. I know that all I need is 500 people to vote. That's all I want to Plus, the other thing is you get things, uh, situations like that Dave Wilson situation with HCC mm -hmm. where he uh, mailed out something that was false and what happens? The trust of well, no, no, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't lie. Yeah, he didn't lie. He didn't lie. He did not lie. No, he did not lie. He didn't lie, but he didn't lie. Okay, you know, he tricked folks. No, he didn't. He just didn't put his picture on there. So that's the kind of politician you're going to be, then? No, I'm not a politician. I'm a picture is the picture of Selena on there. Selena endorsed me, by the way. Endorsed by Selena. My neighbor, Selena. My niece, Selena. Selena. My niece. There you go. You know, he he didn't he didn't necessarily lie. He didn't necessarily lie, really. Okay. If his, if his lawyers well, are listening, lie, okay, he, he did he was, lie. He was uh, misrepresenting. See what had happened was. No, no. <laughs> but that that's again that's unfortunate part on the on the voters for not not looking into yeah. that stuff. And that's where again you know if you really really want to find out information, you're gonna go out and do it. And don't just depend on mailers. Don't just depend on you know what you see. You know you have to dig into it. And you know if you want to use, you know it's proven he can win a race by not even showing a picture on you know, mm -hmm. himself. But 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 then again, it's it's yes, he may not have lied outright, but that story got national attention. Yeah, that was Jimmy Kimmel. Yes, was, uh, exactly. I think Jimmy Kimmel watches anyway. So what's <laughs> <up>? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what happens is people will end up not trusting those ma that material that's supposed to help us be more informed about the candidates, and it discourages more folks, I think, from from going and, and getting out that, um, that literacy that we need to make a more informed decision. So what's important is face to face, right? And knocking on doors and having that conversation, mm -hmm. and that's what's that's going to make it harder for politicians to really gain that trust because a lot of them don't want to walk. A lot of them don't mm -hmm. want to get involved yeah. in that aspect. That's you know tough. what? Let me just throw and in the five dollars. You know the endorsements. You know, so trying to get on Jimmy Kimmel. You know, so <laughs> we like to invite Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> on the show. So, Jimmy, we know that, that you have the interns that check the TV wave. We invite you to the uh, Latino Talk the TV. The RSS wave. is going to come so, up. <laughs> well, see, call us, Jimmy. Call us. See, another thing about politics, you know, the biggest thing that I notice is that, you know, it's not about the positive, but if, as long as you can create enough doubt. You know, it's like as long as you Good can Good news create, is in news. Yeah, you know, like because I would hear all the dirty stuff on everybody. You know, people are, are man, cheese muscles everywhere, man. It's like yeah, all the gossip was everywhere. That reminds yeah. me of Mark Campos. Oh, he goes into the you, next race. You go directly into there. Oh, man. Hold on. Is it his way for a segue? For a segue. Perfect. Perfect segue. Put on, push the record. Push the record button, folks. This is gonna get good. That was awesome. So, so we have Campos. So we have. Well, let me turn red right here. Hold on. You know, uh, Jose is gonna, he's gonna protect Mark Campos. I am not protecting Mark Campos. But, but let me talk about Mark Campos. <laughs> he's one of the dirtiest, dirtiest, probably the dirtiest in the city, campaigners that I have ever met, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, he ran Gracie Gracias' campaign for District I, and Gracie lost against Mr. Robert Gallegos in the runoff. Now, I tell you, a lot of our constituents in District I are fed up with negative politics because it's been going on for so long. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the I, I actually I had a voter uh, call me just the other day, and they were like, uh, "We are so glad that Carol Alvarado and James Rodriguez person did not get elected for office." Okay, we <laughs> are tired of the negativity. We're tired of these negative ads that are being sent out to our houses. Now, from a voter that is not involved in the political arena, that says a lot. Mm. Yeah. So, congrats to Robert Gallegos uh, for 
winning district I, okay. uh, time for new leadership. You know, you got you to take your head off to Robert. I mean, I think he, he was probably the most underestimated candidate in the race. And he came, I mean, he, he, he raised the, the least amount of money and got the most amount of votes. Mm -hmm. I mean, all through grass, grassroots politics and, and knowing the people and being in the area, you know, living in the area the whole time. I mean, I, I, I really, when at first, I didn't think Robert had that, that good a shot. But apparently, you know, he 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 did he did he did his homework and he got out. You know, to the people that voted and they knew him and they they supported him. So Robert, my hats off to you. Congratulations. You know, mm -hmm. it was and a close race at the end of the day, though. It wasn't that. It was what two hundred votes. About one hundred and ninety. One hundred and ninety. Yeah. yeah. About one hundred ninety. Well, that's a lot. That's again, it's that one hundred ninety in, in this type of election. That's a lot of votes. Yeah. How many well, total votes, votes in that race? Uh, I want to say it was about 3,500. 3,500. That's it was about crazy. 5% to, of the election. To pick a city council person in Houston, it's like 3,500. Hey, more people showed up to my quinceañera. No, I'm <laughs> Your quinceañera. My quinceañera. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to see the show. That so was, like, yeah, was a good yeah. <laughs> No, nah, nah, that'll nah. get us on Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I was, look, I worked very closely with uh, with Robert during my time at the county and also at Metro and also very worked closely with uh, with Gracie Garces when, when I was extremely active in LULAC and also at the county and at Metro. And Gracie as a person and as, a, as an activist, I had tremendous respect for everything that she did. You know, and it's unfortunate that she got tied in. And she lost me, you know, the best person won. The voters have, cho have spoken. But at the same time, I think both parties, it ended up becoming a... Once again, a Mark Campos, Carol against the Sylvia Garcia, you know, senator. With all respects for both sides of the, the, you know, the parties, but it ended up being that situation again. At the end of the day, it was a Robert Gallegos representing, you know, Senator Garcia's team, you know, that that block, and on this side, what, what, back in the days, what was it called, the East End Taliban? Remember those East days? Taliban. You know, oh. the, that's what it was called. <laughs> And Still within, called that, actually. In the, in the, <laughs> inside the, the walls of politics, that's what it was. It was a north side group against the East End Taliban and, and whoever held the power at the end of the day. You know, but yeah. Gracie at the end, I, I don't know, y'all's personal experience is different from mine, but I worked with her professionally and I never had a problem with her. And I, I actually had tremendous respect, respect for her. So I wish her the best yeah. also. Well, you know, coming from, you know, being Ben's campaign manager and then moving to help out uh, Robert, you know, my interactions with Gracie were, you know, they're usually, for the most part, pretty good. And I think... Would really kind of, you know, push her or, or push, you know, kind of push more of a barrier between us was really the influence that she had, I think. And, you know, and I can always forgive that. And, you know, and I'm sure she thinks that it's the same thing about me. Um, but, you know, I think she's a she's a great person. You know, I think, you know, um, you know she worked, you know, mm -hmm. she worked in, in at city council. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our council member for the past couple of years wasn't doing his job, and I, I think she was really stepping up for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, although there were still lacks in representation, um, you know, I really, um, there was nobody else, uh, you know, than, uh, you know, we were talking to Ben, you know, there was nobody else that we could support really other than somebody that was gr grounded, grassroots, somebody that's been, been putting in work, you know, hands on, you know, making sure there are sidewalk repairs already in the community. Um, somebody that, that to have that type of character in City Hall. I think we're going to be blessed definitely in, in District I. Mm -hmm. you know what, and, and the first person elected from the NHPO Leadership Institute, Robert Gallegos, graduate of alumnus definitely. of Class Two. My hat's off to him, man. He did a great thing. The NHPO is going to be there. Uh, Leadership Institute is going to be there to support him man, all, all along the way. We're, also, we're both a part of Class Two, so That's we right. were right, right there with Robert. Um, you know, one thing about uh, Sylvia Carroll, and, I, and this is from like on the ground, you know, knocking on doors for the past month. For me, I really didn't see it that way, and I and I know, uh, with all due respect, you know, to you know the both quote unquote factions, you know, I think the senator was there to support, but um, she really let Robert take take this on, on on his own, and I can say that really from working with Robert and and the campaign, you know, um, she was there for support, whatever she could do, but you know, um, she knocked on a couple of doors or, or knocked on doors, but she wasn't really really uh, you know making sure like you know. Robert did what he had to do to make sure that he got elected. Um, when it came with, you know, to the other side, um, you know, I didn't see Carol really as involved. I'm sure there was some support, but I think I did see uh, more of James being involved. Um, you know, maybe that was a downfall. Uh, I, I think that it was more of a Robert uh, Robert Hara versus a Mark Campos hmm. competition in the Sylvie Garcia and a Carol Bravo. 
because uh, they were the ones behind the scenes making a lot of the decisions. Of course, Robert and Gracie were on the ground, but Robert Hara, who was a political consultant for Robert Gallegos, uh, was the ones putting the mailers together, um, making sure that the messaging was correct. The same thing for Mark Campos. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to bring, bring both of them on the show and let them just uh, express their views at the end of the day. Because, you know, what matters is who won. You know? I would love to see both those guys. Uh, I'm afraid one of them would never come on the show. Oh, he's been on the show before. Mark Campos has been on the show before. You think you? I'm, he's been on here before. I would love yeah. to see him. At I'd the end of the day, we all, you know, it's just an issue for the day. You know, at the end of the day, if something else comes up, we're going to become friends again because, you know, at the end of the day, we have to stand together. Well, and not living an eye, it's interesting <laughs> to hear what the, what the ground game yeah. mm -hmm. is like and how it's perceived from, you know, because yeah. there's so much okay. history, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all that history that, it's a battleground, brother. Man, no, I'm actually, I'm kidding. I'm They're kidding. like the it's, Alamo. It's, no, you're not. <laughs> no, okay, I'm not kidding, but it's it's getting better. It really is getting better. Where they get rough, man. you know, it's, it's getting better to where you know somebody like myself, you know, has had an opportunity to be a part of a campaign, and then continues to have opportunities to you know have some kind of a flu influence and um, and to get involved, you know, and basically open up doors for younger people, um, you know, open up doors for people that have been interested in wanting to see how it can affect. Uh, you know, local government, but just, you know, government as a whole, where in the past, you know, there's there's been, you know, the Eastern Taliban has had a chokehold on this, and only, I and mean, you can only join it if you were a part of this group. And right now, I personally feel like, you know, we're going to have an opportunity to really, you know, bring uh, really, you know, gifted, you know, people to be able to be a part of this uh, this process of, of actually governing our community, you know, new leadership, um, you know, having open conversation, open communication, and I, I can, I really feel that way right now. Um, I know there's still a lot of things that are coming up, you know, as far as, uh, uh, you know, March primary races and then November, but, you know, at least I, for me, I feel like, you know, there's still, there's a pathway to actually start working together mm -hmm. if you want to work together. So Robinson, what's the impact of people? Why, why do people, why are people so disengaged? Uh, I think that part of it has to do with so many uh, things that we see on the news where people just lose trust in the process. I think another part of it is that we have an influx of Latinos in the community that are recent immigrants that don't know that all of these positions are elected positions. I think part of it is us too getting out there and telling them these are the folks that represent us. This is how they can help us. And that's how you can get people involved by knowing if we know what the incentive is, then that's what gets us out there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a connection between that's a, a pothole in the street. I need to get that person to help me fix that. I don't think there's enough of a connection there to get us engaged. Hmm. By the way, go, go ahead. Oh, no, I mean, the, the only thing, too, that, that I think um, alarms me a little bit is that we're talking about if we're, are we going to stay with two seats for Hispanics versus we need to start winning at large to get a mayor in? So there's got to be a bigger plan or movement or I'm not sure what to get five city council people. Well, that's that goes lead on into the Ro Roy Morales uh, versus Kubash. Roy Morales ran city at large. We have a phone call. We have a call. We have a call. You're looking at us all surprised. No <laughs> <a> call. <laughs> Who wants to participate in this conversation? Well, they want you to. Re do, to talk about the call. <laughs> yeah, well, we have a caller on the line. Come on in. You're live on the air. Hey, how you doing, Jose? I just wanted to ask Ben Mendez and Joaquin Martinez, do y'all plan on running for any other political positions <laughs> in the future? Most definitely. I don't know what, when, how, uh, but it's in my blood. I'm ready to do it again. Uh, just a matter of timing. Timing is everything. Uh, you can't just go over there and start running for everything like Roy Morales does. Where's Mark Campos? Not Roy Moran. Hey, Mendez, Mendez, for mayor. Mendez, Mendez, for mayor. Mendez for mayor in 2016. You heard it here. Don't get in his way. Está uh, amargado, man. Like, yeah. so what about you, Joaquin? Actually, uh, um, yeah, actually, I, I do plan on it. Um, and um, on a small level, you know, for those that don't know, the lowest level of political office is a precinct chair, and I did put my name in the hat. For precinct 72, um, it's basically you know what what that position does is civic engagement, voter engagement. You want to make sure you turn out the votes. You want to make sure that people in, in your precinct come out and become a voice within a district, within you know 
you know, a House district within a, a Senate district, whatever the case might be. So I am actually, uh, my, my name will be on the ballot on March. Orale. Um, so. but, uh, Another candidate. Yeah, but uh, definitely on Oh, the, no. <laughs> on the, on the, <laughs> Blanco, man. You better watch it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. You better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know, I will tell you this also, Roy Morales did a great job with early vote, with the mail ballots. I mean, spectacular job. Yeah. I think he had like 9,000 mail ballots oh. out there. He had a lot more than that. A I lot guess. more than yeah, that? Definitely like double. So. That, that's like a record for Latinos. Probably a record for anybody. Yeah. I've never seen those numbers before in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nine plus thousand vote by mail ap applications that were sent in on his behalf. Uh, now... Apparently he had a lot of money behind him at the very get-go, um, but that money kind of dwindled in the runoff. He didn't have any money in the runoff. It was hurting. Uh, Kubash had a lot of money. Uh, Kubash won, plain and simple. Hmm. But you know what I'd like to put on the table also? Yeah, I mean, you can't buy an office. You cannot buy an office. And, and part of me, too, I think we need a different type of politician also. W did. George W. did. He bought the office. Well, yes, he did, but we're talking about <laughs> Yes, he did. <laughs> Democrats earn it. No. <laughs> then, uh, but, but what I would like to see is um, Latinos with some, with, th that are going to take chances. So, for example, any one of the politicians in the runoff, I didn't see one of them talk against this Hempstead principle that comes out and says you can't speak Spanish. And I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, well, you know what? That's not my district. Well, you know what I say? I don't care for your district. Jump I want to know that if someone opens their mouth like that in Houston and it's your district, you're going to step up and do something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and even that way, that would have been a way, you know what? There's something negative. They would have jumped on it. They got positive, got the attention. And you go, to the, you go to the booth that one day, the 200 people that could turn it around, they're like, oh, yeah, I remember that person's name. They're the ones that were... Marching with the mariachis in Hempstead and, you know. Well, mm -hmm. it, the interesting thing is that in order to be that person, you need to be in the office first. And that's plain and simple. Like, you can't do that and then all of a sudden you've been all these no, enemies. No, you don't. I, 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 I did it. That, that's well, common no, knowledge right now. No, Back no, in the day, I, was on, I used to do all if this If Morales would have won that, he would have won. If The thing is that, you know, the voter base, you look at the voter base and, and you see who votes. And, and what if, again, if you're fighting for 3%, you know, every vote counts. You know, you, I'm not saying that you got to give in to like not being that advocate for you know your Latino community, but you have to be able to pick your battles as as well mm -hmm. at certain times, and then that way when you have that influence and you're able to bridge some of those gaps in between different communities, then you be that fighter as well as as much as possible. But you can't just you know commit political I, suicide so that way. That's that's the problem. If that's political suicide, I'm back with you. Then I don't want. Then the political system sucks. I mean, I, I, but I, here, here's what here was, here's what I would add to that. I agree with you. That is the strategy that people say that's the smart way to win. Yeah. That's incremental change. He's running for District A, by the way. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You heard it first here on Latino Talk TV. Well, well, it's funny to like Brenda a lot. Yeah. If he's going to have mariachis marching, I want to march with him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, that's the only thing I would add. I would say there's conventional knowledge and wisdom. We're only going to succeed incrementally by that. Right. And we got to just speed up evolution. And guess what? We need that political suicide for that. After the race, we'll be like, well, that was dumb. Yeah. Or they'll be like, wow, that's why Dr. Love won A. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> Dr. Feelgood. Oh, sorry. We got to change hey, your name. Dr. Uh, Dr. That sounds a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> you want to win? Or... <laughs> oh, name me oh, one Dr. revolutionary Amor. who followed all the rules. Uh, you, you heard it first right here, Dr. Amor. Dr. Amor. <laughs> Speaking of Amor, let's keep going down the list. Okay, there was another race at large. Which one? Robinson and Burke. Oh, oh yes. Incumbent. That was Incumbent. one thing that's interesting about what happened. To Andrew Donald. Burke was a perennial uh, campaigner. He finally won. Yeah, he won. I mean, he ran like six, seven times, <laughs> and he finally won, and then he lost. Yeah. So you can run a lot of times and then eventually win. You know, eventually someone's going to vote for you. They see yeah, your name right. on there long enough, you know. Yeah. Yep. Petition. Oh. And then we had a fifth race. Uh, it was uh, Georgia Provost and... Um, uh, Boykins. Boykins. And By Boykins. He, Boy he, he washed Ooh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he that was... Him out. That was a... Uh, and we have another one. The, the port, This is the one that really surprised me. Uh, HCC seat. Yeah. Yolanda Navarro Flores lost to Zef... Capo. Zef Capo. Mm -hmm. Now... 
What do y'all think about that one? Do you know what I mean? That one's just that well, never left me kind of uh well, you got to look at the shocked. district. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, because it's north side, that's majority Latino. Mm -mm. True in numbers, but as far as voters, incorrect. Absolutely. And that's in almost incorrect. the case everywhere, too. <laughs> district I, believe it or not, even though it's the southeast district, everybody says, oh, it's all Latino voters. No, no, no. I, I would say at least half of them are Anglo. Uh, because uh, the people that vote are the senior citizens over 65. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that come out to vote on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All you have to do is look at the mail ballots. How many mail ballots came out and voted that in that election? Thousand, yeah. almost. Yeah. How many? How many in that election? Um, there was about a, almost about a thousand that came out in, or about 900 or so. Okay. I say. But the surprising thing about the the HCC seat is that. You know, Senator Garcia was supporting Zef Capo yeah. and against a Latina. Well, there's a lot of history there. Well, that, that's another show. Yeah, but the other HCC race was Adriana Tamez beat Elinda Garcia. Elinda Garcia was an incumbent. Second time around because mm -hmm. she was an incumbent. Then she left. Well, she, be, she was beaten, and then she came back as an appointee mm -hmm. to the board, and then Adriana beat her in this past election. Adriana Tamez, Dr. Tamez, uh, I think she'll do a great job for mm -hmm. us. Uh, it hats off to Linda. She, she's uh, been a public servant for probably 30, 40 years mm -hmm. uh, as a principal and as an, also in a trustee at HCC. Um, she, she ran a great race. So Adriana Tamez is the winner, though. So I'm excited to see what kind of uh, hard work that Dr. Tamez is going to be doing. And I think she has her heart in the right place. And we're going to see some really good things you know, coming out of that out of that district. No, and she's always been in education mm -hmm. from HISD to uh, Rolla Scary School for Success. So it's uh, maybe, it's, so I guess the Game of Thrones game is over at HCC because I mean, it's been like they got an interim director, they've had all these votes. So hopefully there'll be some stability to, to, to kind of shape stuff, of course. Uh, yeah. And then HISD, uh, you probably heard of the turmoil going on over there with the bribery schemes. Uh, uh, that's going to be interesting to see who gets indicted or who doesn't get indicted. But I thought the case got thrown out. No, no, that, that was the civil case. That was not the criminal, uh, case. The criminal case. Okay. Yeah. So it's still pending. Uh, uh, this is just rumor. Uh, I'm assuming there's going to be some indictments. So we'll see what happens. If that happens, you're going to have a lot of heads spin. There's going to be some special elections coming down the pike. A lot of walls are going to be caved in because... Uh, once uh, there's indictments, uh, you see all kinds of things happening. The revolution, you, you can start it there, man. That's right. <laughs> well, well, and you know what, too, with, with those HASD seats, um, we just ran some numbers on them. Um, the, lowest, the lowest number of votes you need to get a seat on the largest school, one of the largest school systems in the country, is about 2,500 votes. The most you need is 10,000. So I have more Facebook friends. <laughs> you, know, you have friends? Wins. Oh, Just on my. Facebook. <laughs> hey, El, El Libro de Traficante is international. <laughs> he is internationally known. I got Twitter friend. No. <laughs> I'm going to start rocking the microphone. That's right. <laughs> so, no, that, that's, that's interesting to keep an eye out on. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, and then, not to mention the March elections, uh, we have Carol Alvarado running against um, Susan Delgado. Susan Delgado. For? For state rep. 145. Okay. In March. In March. Okay, that's a new one to me. Yep. As you can tell, I'm not that well versed with all the elections that happen. So when are there elections? March. March, November. November. There's primaries. There's general. And then you have your off years. You know, it's so a full contact elections. sport, people. If you're out there watching TV <laughs> and you don't know what the elections are, but, you can but, be voting every month. But think about it. I mean, here we are, five Latinos with GEDs. Or, yeah. Or, or higher. <laughs> oh, higher. I share. Right? <laughs> At least. <laughs> you know, your English is so-so. <laughs> you didn't pass me. <laughs> you said five. Hold on. One, two, three, four, two, five. Uh, <laughs> five. 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 <laughs> Hey, seven. Seven. <laughs> seven of us. Seven of us. <laughs> you know, Dr. Amor. Four guys and two girls. But, <laughs> mira. It's because I don't have the UV. The UV. The UV. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Five guys. <laughs> but think about it. And myself. <laughs> Okay. Right, okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. You, got, right. you got six minutes on the show before they kick us off the air. Right. 300 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> ratings, ratings play right now. No, um, and we don't know exactly when the elections are. Yep. Um, and even during the runoff, I went to the place that I voted the first time. 
and was told, no, not here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the time, energy gas and didn't have the kids to go to the next spot. Mm -hmm. That's messed up. I mean, that is messed up. You know. It is, but, you know, and then talking about elections every year, man, District I or the East End has gone through, you know, really four elections. You've had wow. SD6, you had the runoff, you had City yep. Council runoff, <laughs> and I, I want to say that each person or your your more um, your regular voters probably got about 50 to 60 mailers. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they've gotten about you know, 30 to 40 calls at least, you know, and actually a good thing came from that. You know, City Council District I, the November election, there's about 12,000 people that are voted uh, were regularly. It's about about four. Uh, it was about 6,000, 7,000, somewhere wow. around there. So we almost doubled that. You know, vote by mail was almost tripled, or you know, close to being close to tripled. So, you know, sometimes it might take having an election every month in order to get that engagement. But you know, it definitely you did you didn't you do need to know you know where you're voting, you know when you're voting and stuff of that sort. And, that's going to be something that everybody in here needs to commit I mean, to, always that, learning and pushing. You blame me, though? Yeah. No, you can't blame me. It's a libro I'm, the, I'm the biggest book nerd I read. No, no. You it's just hard didn't for, read that book where the polling location me. was. <laughs> it's hard for me. It's hard for our Raza. You know, the, so. the, the, Latino, the, the Latino electorate is, is I mean, it's, it's maturing. It's, it's become a lot more worldly. So, I mean, it's, it's, right now we're just going through the growing pain. Yeah. Well, Tony's growing next book, nice Learn How to Count. <laughs> the Mexican way. So we got we got three minutes left, and there's one thing I wanted to put out there is that I'm actually very very excited to announce that my my father is becoming an American citizen this week. Great. So kudos wow. to my father. Right. We'll be voting soon. As we'll be voting. I'll be dragging him with me to go vote. We got to do this, so I'm excited for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know. We need to invite Joaquin to come sit over here. Come over here, Joaquin. Come sit over here. The, the super campaigner over right here. here. This young the future man. Future generation. That's right. He'll be running for office. He wants to act shy right now. <laughs> he wants his own show. He wants his own show. He wants to secure the couch so he can see. Uh, actually, uh, thanks for bringing him up, Ben, but uh, he's a good kid. Good kid, and he's canvassing, phone banking. And so if you want if you want to volunteer, you can go ahead and just give me a call. I'm, I'm his agent. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh. Hey, one more announcement that I want the father to, to put out there. What's your son? Uh, well, Nicholas, my son, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Perez, uh, uh, he was... Um, nominated by HISD. I, di I really didn't know what they were nominating for, but for a state uh, uh, leadership award. And wow. uh, uh, he was one of the only, uh, well, he was one of the, the, the individual winners from HISD at the state level awesome. to win a youth leadership award with the Great. Texas Association. Come on over here. Congratulations. I can't. Uh, They're all being shot. Tape, <laughs> whatever that means, Texas Association of Parental Bob, I'm not sure. But, but it's something like that. But but we're really, really, so really just stunned. so you know out there how, how involved he is. He's actually working the cameras for the show. And if you don't know about Latino Talk TV, everybody here is a volunteer, 100% right volunteer. So we do this, we come do here, this job for the community, come for you. Joaquin, come, come on here. over here. You got the camera out there? You got the, the zoomer? There we go. Look at, look at, look at these two young men. <laughs> these two young men. I was telling Joaquin a little earlier. These two young men, I was telling Ben. They're going to be running. They're going to be running stuff here in this town in the, in the next 15, 20 years. Just watch yeah. them. These two here. Just watch these two kids. They're That's moving fantastic. shakers. I'm surprised he doesn't have his hat on today. He's wearing the hat. <laughs> I, I decided to be a good dad and comb his hair. Today. <laughs> <laughs> and, t and then with little Ben on the way? Yep. Little Ben on is the he, way is up? Are you going to join the fraternity too? Oh, definitely. You know it. <laughs> and, it, you know, it kind of goes back to what you started open, you know, uh, with parent involvement. We need to make sure that our community, of course, it's traditional in a Hispanic mm -hmm. community, but we need to make sure that we continue to push that even more. All right. Well, on that note, thank you, everyone here, for, for joining us tonight. Uh, you are watching Latino Talk TV, and there's one thing they want to leave you with. Make sure to get involved. And next week, we're going to have a very special guest join us on the show. Make sure you watch next Monday night at 6 p.m. live here at Houston. From the North Pole. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> no, his help.